processes of the moon, the earth, and the planets. Make this bag number 196 a special bag. Yes, sir. Joe, this crater is a gold mine. And there might be diamonds in the next one. Yeah, babe. Then we saw another practical use of television in lunar exploration. And Dave, uh, you're going to want to cinch up Jim's collection bag probably before you go much longer. It's coming uh, very loose there. Okay. Let me do it right now, Joe, Just don't, so we don't forget it. Roger, we sure don't want to lose that one. I don't know what we do without you, Joe. Okay, Jim, let's get on a rover and get back. Yeah. It's nice to sit down, isn't it? Oh, it is. Okay, and we're on our tracks. Roger. And follow them home. There's sure a lot of neat rocks in uh, Dune. Too bad we can't spend some more time. On your next trip. Yeah, next trip, you're right. They're gonna be seasick. <laughs> what do you expect uh, traveling on the Mari? They returned to the science station where Scott once more manned the drill to place the second heat flow probe and later to get a deep core sample. The difficulty in drilling was shown by Scott's hand, which would carry bruised fingernails from his efforts for several weeks after the mission. Okay, Dave, take heart. You've got just one minute of drilling left. Okay, we made a little money, didn't we? And over fifth. It was time to get back into the LEM and end EVA-2. The drill and attached sections were left in the ground for removal during the next day's traverse. On Earth, scientists pored over data from the television, from the astronauts' descriptions, and from the orbiting experiments. The 1,400 photographs the crew would return would themselves constitute a major scientific legacy. Lunar exploration was achieving a new maturity. We are now exploring to test new hypotheses, and the pieces were fitting together. One scientist, when asked why he didn't sit down and rest after an around-the-clock session, replied, I can't. I'm too excited. Well, it's nice to be outside where you can stretch a little bit. Okay. After the sight. Yeah, I'll meet you up there. After the drill, we last left our friend. Oh, it's our friend, huh? Yes, it is. Well, if we could just get our shoulder under that. <laughs> Their first stop was at the drill they had left during the second EVA. This core tube was the deepest sample ever collected from the moon, perhaps the deepest we would ever get. Eight and a half feet beneath the surface, cutting through 58 distinct layers. This would not only tell us more about the lunar structure, but contained in this soil were traces of particles emitted by the sun billions of years ago, which would give us a clue to the early years of the solar system. But now it was time to leave the core tubes to be picked up later and head west-northwest to the rim of Hadley Rill. Then Scott and Irwin descended a short distance over the rim of Hadley Rill to get a piece of one of the large blocks thought to be lunar bedrock. It's a big rock there. It sure is. Let's go down and get the chunk of the bedrock here. Get a little closer so you get that big chip out of there. Boy, what a rock. Get ready to move out, Dave. Yep. Yeah. Something here for the next guy. 
They buckled their seat belts for the ride back to the lunar module. Oh, what a big mountain that Hadley is. Yeah, it's beautiful. The sun is really fierce. Oh, look at the mountains today, Jim, when they're all sunlit. Isn't that beautiful? It really is. By golly, that's just super. You know, unreal. Dave, I'm reminded of a favorite biblical passage from Psalm. I look unto the hills from whence cometh my help. But of course, we get quite a bit from Houston, too. After a stop to pick up the core samples, they returned to the LEM to close out their final traverse. But first, Scott would make history, canceling a stamp on an interplanetary envelope. I'm very proud to have the opportunity here to play postman. What could be a better place to cancel a stamp than right here at Hadley Rill? Then a demonstration of a classic experiment. I guess one of the reasons uh, we got here today was because of a gentleman named Galileo a long time ago who made a rather significant discovery about falling objects in gravity fields. And we thought that uh, where would be a better place to confirm his uh, findings than on the moon. And uh, so we thought we'd try it here for you. Uh, the feather happens to be appropriately a falcon feather for our falcon. And I'll uh, drop the two of them here and hopefully They'll hit the ground at the same time. How about that? How about that? that Mr. Galileo was correct in his findings. Finally, Scott drove the rover away from the LEM so that its TV camera could pick up a picture of the coming liftoff. As the spaceport Reisling would say, we're ready for you to come back again to the homes of men on the cool green hills of Earth. Thank you, Joe. We're ready to. But it's been great. 171 hours and 37 minutes after they had lifted off the planet Earth, Scott and Irwin would lift off its sister planet, accompanied by a musical salute they themselves would provide from a small tape recorder on board. This lift off, automatic. Hey, good smooth ride, Ed. Almost sounds like the wind wrestling, doesn't it? Oh, what a view of the rail, huh? Older tracks coming down into it. The rendezvous and docking procedures were flawless, right on the money. But their jobs were not over yet. They would spend two more days in lunar orbit gathering data from the experiments and photography. One more day around the moon than any preceding mission. On August 4th, they prepared to come home. But even on their last orbit of the moon, they had another experiment. 